UFC Vegas 57. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown. Main event, Mataj Gamrot takes on Armand Sarukian. Pretty good card. We'll talk about each of the matchups. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. And let's jump right into it. First fight of the night. The ladies going after it here in the strawweight division. Jin Yu Frey versus Vanessa Demopoulos. I'm going to be picking Jin Yu Frey. I feel like she's the physically stronger girl, the more dangerous striker as well, better wrestling. With Demopolis, you do have a pretty good jiu-jitsu game from the bottom. Definitely sneaky armbar that went over Silvana gomez War. She was dropped bad, locks that armbar up from the bottom. So she does have also the ability to recover, right, and come back. But Frey, to me, is going to be consistent. I think out muscles her in the clinch, works good Muay Thai. She's a pretty good Muay Thai style striker. Um, and I feel like she has the advantages in the wrestling and the striking. Demopolis' jiu-jitsu, I think, gets stifled. Even if they do go to the mat, she'll get taken down and she'll accept the bottom position. And in the cage, accepting that bottom position, you tend to lose decisions. Unless you're like the elite of the elite from the bottom. I'm going to go Jin Yu Frey to win a unanimous decision here. But the lines are so wide. Minus 259, best value for Frey. Demopolis plus 235. That's really wide. I could see this line much closer, and it's a more playable bet there. But Frey's a big favorite. I like her to win. I'm going to call it decision. Don't know about the betting side here with this wide-ass line. Let's get to the next one. Mario Batista versus Brian Kelleher. I think we're in store for an interesting fight here. I'm going to go the Mario Batista side, but as a fan, I really do like Brian Kelleher. I just feel like Batista has some advantages. The clinch, I think he's the physically stronger guy, better offensive wrestling. He's dirty in the clinch as well. I think Kelleher is pretty good from distance. He's got nice front kicks, fairly quick hands. I definitely feel like Keller has sneaky knockout power. He hits a lot harder than I, I guess you'd think. He's deceptively powerful out there. For me, I see Batista wearing on Kelleher against the cage. Striking, I could see moments for both men. Brian Kelleher got those short arms, man. Only a 64-inch reach. Even though he's only three inches shorter, he's down a bit more in the reach department. Five-inch edge in the reach for Batista. I think from distance, he'll have a little bit of an advantage with the boxing. Though I think Kelleher might have better kicks. I'm going to go Mario Batista to win a decision. Not... Bad odds for him right now. Minus 150 for Batista. Kelleher plus 144. I'd love to jump on the Kelleher dog side. And I mean, pure betting wise, it's not a terrible value style bet. But he's 35. I think Batista's improving each time out. Decent win in the last one against Jay Perrin where he controlled well. I see competitive decision win. Mario Batista over Brian Kelleher here. The fan in me wants Kelleher, though. Next fight, Cody Durden versus J.P. Bays. I gotta go the way of Cody Durden. I think J.P. is pretty good with his jiu-jitsu. I like that he's shooting for a lot of submissions. And if Durden is careless, he certainly could get caught in something. Stand-up game, I think Durden's better than J.P. I think he hits a lot harder. He does have professional fight striking, though he's known for the wrestling base. Durden can't be stupid here and get overzealous with the takedown attempts and just leave his neck out because Bays could lock something up. That being said, I do think Durden fights smart. I think we might see more kickboxing than uh, you'd expect typically for a Durden fight, and I could see him hurting Bays. We've seen Bays put down. We've seen him knocked out. I don't want to say he has a fragile chin, but he's a guy that has been proven you can hurt him. I'm going to go Durden for the win, leaning it towards decision, but wouldn't be shocked if he actually gets a stoppage too. Of course, Bays by submission is an impossible. Line's close here. It favors uh, JP by just a bit. He's a minus 110 favorite. Durden, the plus 105 dog. I think the dog's got a pretty good fighting shot in this matchup. I think Cody Durden for the win, as long as he's not careless with his wrestling. Avoid getting caught in something. I think he's the better striker than JP, better wrestler than JP. Pure grappling, jujitsu, submission game. I favor it to JP Bays. Durden for the win. I expect him to get it done here. Not an easy matchup though at all, but I'm going to go Durden. Let's keep running up. Halion Paiva versus Sergey Morozov. 
I'm going Sergey Morozov. I actually think he's going to sleep Paiva in this matchup. I know Paiva had that good win over Kyler Phillips. Controversial, 100%. It should have been a draw. Was destroyed in the first round. Phillips then gasses, and Paiva ends up winning second and third. That fight's a draw, though. Like, I don't know how you don't score that first round at 10-8. He has it listed as a win, but it's a draw. Sean O'Malley murders him in his next fight out. He took a lot of damage in his win over Phillips. Win. He took a lot of damage in the loss to Sean O'Malley. And now, I mean, relatively quick turnaround. Not, I guess not necessarily five months. It feels kind of quick. That knockout was kind of bad. He took a lot of damage. Morozov, though, just three months ago, got hurt. Got beat by Douglas Silva DeAndraj in a fight that he was ahead. He was looking really good in the first round. Was able to hurt DeAndraj. And Morozov's a really dangerous striker. I love the stand-up from him. Um, he's pretty smooth with his boxing skill set. Good range management. Light-footed style. He gets in and out of range well. And I feel like his hands are definitely faster than Paiva. He can attack the target a lot quicker and with more precision than Halion Paiva, who I say is a decent kickboxer at heart, but more of a looping striker. Head kind of there to be hit. And being chinned a few times back-to-back. Even though he didn't get knocked out with Phillips, I think Morozov is actually going to put him to sleep here. I'm going to go Sergey Morozov by knockout, and I'm kind of feeling that second round for him to get it done. Could be the first as well. If he has Paiva hurt, he has to take note of previous fights. His loss to Andrade, this for Morozov, and Paiva's controversial win over Phillips. You can't go balls to the wall, just gunning for it, totally empty the tank, and then Paiva sur- survives. Morozov needs to be patient in his attack and be precise, which I believe he will. I'm going to go Morozov by the knockout. I think he's definitely the better striker of the two, and I kind of see the wrestling edge as something also to note. Might be able to mix in a bit of takedowns here. But on the feet, I think Morozov does get it done, and he sleeps Paiva. Looking at the line, Paiva is a slight dog, plus 133. Morozov, the minus 135 favorite. I like Sergey Morozov for the win, and I'm going to say knockout. More action incoming. Next fight, TJ Brown versus Shailian Nuender BK. I'm going to be going with TJ Brown here. Not super impressed with Nuender BK. I know he's got a good wrestling base. I mean, he's a pretty strong guy, athletic style. Not super explosive, though, but powerful, certainly, with his clinch abilities and his takedowns. But I think TJ Brown is definitely the quicker wrestler. I feel like his level changes are better, and he changed them a lot better with his striking. As far as being on the actual mat, I think TJ Brown is the better submission skill set. When you look at them standing up, Brown is a pretty good pressure fighter. I could see him making Shelian move back, maybe even mixing in takedowns against the cage. Pretty good straight shots from Brown, being the straight and the cross down the line, like, or excuse me, the jab and the cross down the line. He's got a pretty money straight, and he closes distance quickly. I'm just not super impressed with Shelian. Uh, his win over uh, Soriano in the last one, at this point, doesn't really mer- have much merit behind it because Soriano uh, losing out in the regional scene. But still, win in the UFC for sure. TJ Brown, I think he's going to get it done. You look at the last two opponents. Charles Rose is a, a gritty veteran. Good win for Brown, and he's got a split over Kai Kamaka, who at the time was like a pretty highlight prospect. I think TJ Brown hand-raised. I am thinking decision, though. I like Brown's submission abilities. I could see him landing takedowns, but I don't feel like he's going to get Shelian out of there. I think we're going the full distance, and TJ Brown takes a unanimous decision over him. Looking at the lines, TJ Brown, the minus 200 favorite. Shelian is plus 180 as the underdog. I like TJ Brown with a fair bit of confidence to uh, be too much for Shelian here. Next fight is our featured prelim. Tefan Chukwi versus Carlos Alberg. Guys, I have to go to Fonchukwi. Yes, Alberg is a pretty damn good kickboxer. When you look at it on paper, I mean, he should be ultra talented. I didn't like the performance against Fabio Charant. I think it was a little bit lackluster. Granted, it takes two to tango. Charant wasn't too uh, into the idea of exchanging with Alberg. And can you really blame him? Alberg's very tall, very long, hands are very low, and he's precise. What Chukwi has a big advantage of to me is going to be in the physical strength department, in the clinch, and I think the MMA knockout power department, Chukwi has an, an edge. I don't feel like Alberg is super well-rounded. I, I don't want to say he's overrated, but the city kickboxing guys, they train with Adesanya, they come in, the hype is there, but the reality is I think Tefan Chukwi as an MMA fighter is more evolved. His game plan, I think, has to be to look to clinch. You need to wear on Alberg against the cage. Even if Chukwi's going to have success standing up, which he definitely could because he has serious power in his hands, 
he needs to mix in takedown attempts. I'm going to bank on Chukwi. I am going to say decision. Wouldn't be shocked with a KO. Alberg on the opposite side could outpoint him over the three rounds. That's what he needs to do to win the fight. But I think Chukwi is going to make it ugly. The dirtier this fight is, the better it is for Chukwi. With a pure kickboxing style of striking that you get with Alberg, you want to make it nasty for him. You want to get him in the dirty boxing. You want to hold him inside. You want to wear on him against the cage. I think Tefan Chukwi could do it. The last one against Azamat Mirzanakhanov, Chukwi was up two rounds to zero, and then he got knocked out in the final. He's definitely improving. At one point, I felt like he was extremely slow. At this point... I see improvements, and I see him getting the win. I'm going to Fon Chukwi win. I am going to say by a decision over Carlos Alberg, who I'm just not all that high on right now. Besides training with Izzy, being flashy, having a good look to him, I don't think he offers uh, extreme danger in there. Chukwi for the W. Looking at the lines here, Chukwi is the dog, plus 108. Alberg, the minus 117 favorite. I like the slight money underdog, Tefan Chukwi, to win. I think he's going to make it ugly against Alberg and use his overall tool set, which he's definitely been sharpening, and get himself a unanimous decision on the featured prelim of the night. Let's jump towards the main card. And it starts off with quality action. It's Chris Curtis versus Hadolfo Vieira. Guys, I think that Hadolfo Vieira is actually going to win this fight. Chris Curtis is extremely powerful, and he does have a quality wrestling defense. Adolfo Vieira looked bad against Anthony Hernandez after he totally gassed out. But let's be honest, he was destroying Hernandez. His jiu-jitsu is second to none. My question is this. If Chris Curtis has his back taken, how is he going to do defending the submission attempts of the black belt hunter, Adolfo Vieira? The jiu-jitsu is elite class. He is showing, in my opinion calmness in the cage being definitely more patient improved striking game chris curtis to me is not this crisp technical precise striker he's a powerhouse who's explosive and he comes to fight if Vieira fights smart which i suggest to you he will looks to mix in takedowns even if he's not successful in the takedown attempts i think he needs to look to get curtis near the cage and look to get the back from there i'm gonna go Hadolfo Vieira win by submission round pick there i could see it anywhere in the first or i guess the first three all three i could see it anywhere from one to three kind of feeling that late first or even second round submission i feel like he puts curtis in a bad position and locks up that submission it's going to be interesting to see chris curtis out there i mean there's definitely some dangerous advantages like the knockout power speed he's a southpaw but the patience from Vieira, if he's calm, fights intelligently, and really uses that jiu-jitsu, I see him choking Chris Curtis out here. So I'm going to go Adolfo Vieira for the win. Looking at the lines here, Vieira's a fair-sized dog at plus 143. Chris Curtis minus 155 is the favorite. I'll tell you this, if Vieira hadn't lost that fight to Fluffy Hernandez, right now he'd be a big favorite over Chris Curtis. Don't doubt the submission game. I know Curtis has only been submitted one time, but there's levels to jiu-jitsu. Adolfo Vieira here. I'm going Adolfo Vieira for the win as long as he's calm, patient, and then I think the gas tank has improved and we're going to see more of it. He's going to get it done. Adolfo Vieira for the victory over Chris, the action man Curtis, uh, who I think is, is going to take his first L. And now he's the favorite for the first time in any UFC fight. He takes a loss here. Next one, Umar Nurmagomedov versus Nate Maness. I'm very excited to see Umar Nurmagomedov, guys. There's no other way you can pick this. It's got to be Umar, but I love Nate Maness. He's a great dude. He's been on the show early on for the channel, so I got to give much love to Nate Maness. If he's seeing this, I, I apologize, my brother. I love you, but I think Umar Nurmagomedov is going to be too much for him. He just seems like the next big thing in the bantamweight division. He's a Nurmagomedov. These guys are hyper elite. He has the stand-up game that's top tier. And he has really dangerous grappling. Southpaw stands for Umar. Very fast. His kicks are incredible. The way he chains in takedowns is really, really, really nice. His clinch work is solid, and he's got good cage pressure. And obviously, he has dangerous submission skills. Maness is a very good kickboxer. Can be controlled a bit against the cage, but pretty good defensively with his wrestling. He has sneaky knockout power for sure. Good straight punches. Some of the best. But man, I think that Umar Nurmagomedov is going to get a hold of him, is going to control him, is going to get on top of him, and I think he's going to find a way to choke him out. I'm going to win by submission for Umar Nurmagomedov here, and I think he's going to beat Nate Maness. Wouldn't be shocked if it went the full three either because Nate's tough as they come, but you have to go Umar for the win here and ride that hype train up. Much love to Nate, though, and I mean, 
maybe a dog attack is in play because the line is outrageous here. Best value is minus 649 for Nurmagomedov. Maness upwards of a plus 650 underdog. And he's a legit fighter. He's 14-1. and one. But it's just because Umar is looking like he's that level. I'm going to go Umar for the win. I'm saying submission in the first or second round. And I think he beats Nate Maness in a bit of a showcase opportunity against another real prospect here. Let's keep running up this main card. Tiago Moises versus Christos Iagos. Guys, I have to go the way of Iagos. Moises, outside of surviving with Islam Mahachev, has, if he wins, over Alexander Hernandez and Bobby Green. He got destroyed by Yoel Alvarez in the last one. Christos Iagos is competent everywhere he's got a really good wrestling base solid submission game he switches his stances up fairly well um and i do think he changed he chains the punches and the takedowns well tiago on the other side very good brazilian jiu-jitsu it's kind of what he's known for but does have the thai boxing style doesn't have a hyper elite wrestling game isn't a super athlete he shouldn't be this big of a favorite He's lost to top competition and fought top competition, but it's not like he's going out there and even having like com- super competitive moments with Mahachev. I think that Yagos is going to go out there and actually pull off a decision. I could see him outstriking Moises. I don't feel like Moises has the power to hurt Yagos. I see Christos getting the hand raised. The last one was a loss against Sarukian. That's a monster matchup for Yagos. And you look at the two losses, Alvarez, Islam Mahachev, and I think he's adding Yagos to the list of losses. I think Yagos beats him on a decision here. Moises is like good everywhere. Shines in the jiu-jitsu. But doesn't come off to me as like hyper good anywhere. The Yagos, I think stylistically, is a bad matchup for him. With the wrestling base, I don't see Moises taking him down and beating him up. I think Yagos is probably the quicker and more powerful striker too. Yagos, big dog. Plus 206. Moises, the minus 225 favorite. I am riding Christos Yagos for the win. Over Tiago Moises. And an interesting lightweight matchup. Next fight is our featured bout of the night. Josh Parisian and Alan Bolde. These right here are really the more bottom end tier of the heavyweight divisions. But both guys like relatively known at this point. Parisian, he was on the Contender Series. He was on the Ultimate Fighter. Bolde, training partner with Cyril Gan. I have to pick the side of Alan Bolde. But I don't want to. I'll be honest, I have a hard time picking either guy. You look at the line here. Near even, minus one Teb, Bode, plus 102 for Parisian. It's a pick'em's fight. It's very iffy because you have back-end level heavyweights. I think Bode has the quicker hands. He's the more skilled kickboxer, and he is deceptively fast. Somewhat of a good athlete, but doesn't shine anywhere, really. Looking at Parisian, he's a scrappy striker who has a very pressure base, like in your face type style. Okay, hands. Kind of see him trying to wear on Bode against the cage. Will Bode let it happen? I think he'll be okay defensively. I think he'll find more success striking, but this is like a really weird fight, man. It's an odd feature bout of the night. I'll tell you. I feel like we could have other matchups in front of it. I think you could have put Nurmagomedov in the feature bout of the night, but it is heavyweight action. So if this is the official lineup, it's what they want to stick with. I'm going to, with like zero excitement slash confidence, say Bode wins a decision, which feels weird to say with two big heavyweights that kind of have a bit of power. I feel like Bode's going to get his hand raised, man. I don't like this fight at all as far as the betting side. And I mean, to me, It's still going to be okay. Like, this is one of those matchups where I really feel like it could be a snooze fest. If you've been watching The Ultimate Fighter, you know how the heavyweight fights sometimes are on that season when they're lower tier. Not that these are bad fighters, but they're not top tier UFC talent. To me, Bode for the win decision. If Parisian did pull it off, I wouldn't be shocked. But I think Bode, he has the athleticism edge. He's the better striker of the two. He should be able to defend Josh Parisian's takedown attempts. If Parisian wins, I see it by smothering against the cage and just laying there, holding him and peppering shots. I'm going to go Bode for the W. Don't like this fight, though, but Bode wins. Co-main event of the evening. Now I get excited. Neil Magny, Shavkat Rachmanov. Guys, Shavkat Rachmanov is going to send Neil Magny into the bleachers, man. I guess there's no bleachers because we're at the apex. But he's going to destroy him. 
Shavkat seems like the next big thing. I feel like if you're looking for a prospect at 170 or future contender, you're looking right at one. His striking is, in my opinion, top tier. Patient, precise, very calm demeanor inside of the cage, great spinning attacks, excellent straight punches, also has sneaky submission skills as well. He's very dangerous. He's long, 6'1", with a 77-inch reach. Doesn't match Magny in the length department to a T, but he's not that far off. Magny's 6'3", with an 80-inch reach. The thing with Magny is he has no f- punching power, no finishing ability. There's decent volume strikes from distance, decent clinch work against the cage. He's a well-rounded fighter, and Neil Magny is going to beat a lot of guys. Shavkat Rachmanov has that X factor. I think he's knocking Neil Magny out. The name Mike Ricci comes to mind when Neil Magny was knocked out way back on the Ultimate Fighter. I think Shavkat knocks him out as well. And Magny hasn't been stopped in a while, actually. I want to check here because I think it's been a long time by knockout, too. He was knocked out in 2018 against Santiago Ponzinibbio in the fourth. I think that Shavkat Rachmanov probably knocks him out in the first. Could see it in the second, but it's going to be a devastating KO. Magny's getting slept, man. I think Shavkat finds that perfect shot. Looking at the line, Magny plus 336 as the dog. Rachmanov, the minus 380 favorite. I think he's the next big thing on the rise. I see him being a serious challenge to a lot of the top guys. Magny's not going to be the one to stop him. I guess we'll find out how Shavkat does against the more elite wrestlers of the weight class as he climbs. I feel like he's going to do pretty damn well. Shavkat win, knockout over Neil Magny in brutal fashion. Main event of the evening, Arman Sarukian and Mataj Gamrat. These guys are on the rise here. Like This is future of the weight class. Both guys in the relative primes, but like Sarukian, I guess technically speaking, is like not because he's only 25. He's going to get the win though. Sarukian's going to beat Mataj Gamrat and give him his first real loss of his career. The Garam fight, toss-up, people will say they felt that Mataj won, understandable. This is a real fight here. And I think Armand Sarukian's going to be too much, man. He's uber-talented, extremely good kickboxing, great punches, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous high kicks, knockout power in his hands, got a great lead hook. He times his takedown super well, and he's so heavy on top. He's a specimen, man. And I think his physical strength is a real factor and his submission skills are going to be really dangerous from that top position as well. He's actively going to be looking to finish Mataj if he's on top. But Gamrod is a monster too. He's a very good kickboxer who has great takedowns in his own right um, and honestly has a good submission game too. Really smooth kicks. Persistent with the wrestling. But I think Sarukian matches him and surpasses him in every department. But Gamrod is game as they come. He's the gamer. And no joke, he's going to be here. He has to be here. I'm saying we're going the full five. I'm going to go Armand Sarukian to win a decision over Mataj Gamrot. And I really feel like Sarukian's on his way up towards true contendership. The line is minus 249 for Sarukian. Mataj plus 227 as a dog. I just think Armand is... Too much. But Gamrot's great too. It sucks to see like two of the next big things already matched up against one another. Another name that kind of comes to mind from, you know, that similar uh, Eastern European region is Demiris Magilov, who just won a very close fight against Garam Kudaladze, who's also there. I see him eventually facing both these two. I think Gamrot's still going to be around even with a loss here. He's the real deal and I think climbs his way back. Sarukian wins a decision though now. And I feel like he's just too special, man. And I also think his quickness advantage striking is going to be a clear factor. And I have a hard time seeing Gamrot getting dominant position on Sarukian on the ground. But in the contrary, I can see Sarukian on top of Gamrot. Armand Sarukian for the win in the main event of the evening. That is the UFC Vegas 57 card. I am very excited for a full week's worth of content for it. We'll dive deep into it. I'll be dropping videos almost every day of the week. So keep it locked in here at MMA Experts. Make sure you guys subscribe. If you're new to the channel, turn on those post notifications too. And of course, smash the hell out of the like button here. If you don't have anything to say, in the comments, but you want to just pump the algorithm, leave a W in the chat. But if you do have stuff to say, definitely say so, because I'm curious what you guys think of the picks. Much love, my people. I will see you all in the next one. Peace, guys.